Hey guys, so for this video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of secret season 4 tips and tricks. Usually when the season first begins, I do sort of like a how to win guide, and it's not that those are not useful anymore, I'm sure a lot of you would like it, I just feel like I covered most of what's new in my video from yesterday. So for this one, we're going to be covering everything that I left out that I really have not seen anywhere else on YouTube. These include secret new features to rotate faster, insane almost pay to win techniques to change your character skin, as well as a full and complete guide to all the new fish that are in the game. So I hope you're excited, I know all of these tips and tricks are going to be very very useful, and without further ado, let's get right on into it. The first and arguably the most frustrating change that Epic implemented is the fact that chests no longer have a 100% spawn rate. Yes, you heard that correctly, chests no longer spawn every single time. From what I've seen, they're apparently a max percentage of 70% and a minimum percentage of 50%. It really doesn't matter the exact percentage, all you have to know is that it is not 100%. My big tip for getting around this is that once you drop off the battle bus, you should not be looking for a house with a chest. This used to be very viable because you know the chest would be there. Nowadays though, that is not the case. Instead, I recommend anytime you see a house, look inside for floor loot and land on the floor loot. Floor loot is obviously not guaranteed to be there, but if you can see it, you know it's gonna be there, so you should land on it. Oh, and before I forget, this does not only apply to houses. If you're near a gas station or just any regular floor loot spawn, land on it if it's a good gun like a shotgun or TAC SMG. I don't want to see any of you guys complaining about the fact that you lost an early game fight because you had no guns when you landed on a chest. As a Annoying as it is that Epic changed it, the fact of the matter is that you're gonna have to deal with it. Secret trick number two is now that pumps are back in the game, you're actually able to side grade a charge into a pump. As you guys can see, I am currently in a custom arena game. I have zero points because I have not played this season. Regardless, I have a blue charge shotgun and when I walk up to an upgrade station, I'm able to side grade it to a blue pump for only 60 mats. 20 materials for each and now I have a blue pump. I can also side grade it back if I wanted to for the same exact amount. By far the best part about it though is if you have a purple or gold charge shotgun, you can side grade that for the same exact amount. I'm side grading to a purple pump, which is one of the best shotguns in the game, for 60 materials. I'll tell you guys right now, the gold and purple pumps are the best shotguns, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video about them. Just keep in mind, whenever you find a purple or gold charge shotgun, you can side grade it to the best pump shotgun and the best overall shotgun in the game for 60 mats. That is broken. Moving on, we'll look at all the new fish because as you've probably seen, there are a lot of them. In my video from yesterday, which was the everything new from Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 4, I said that there are 40 different types of fish. The reason I said that is because when you press your map button, in the top left you can see a little fish icon, and when you click on it, you get this whole new fish page. It's numbered from 1 to 39, and it has a bunch of different little fish icons, as well as fish that you've actually caught. As any person might guess, you would think that there's 40 different types of fish, right? Well, not exactly. The way that it actually works is that there are 8 different types of fish with 5 variants of each type. And I just missed it. Alright, as you can see, I have all 8 different types of fish in front of me. I line them up in rarity order because I'm a nerd neck. Starting at the beginning with the small fry. This is the most common fish because you do not need to find it in fishing holes. You guys should know what it does. It grants you 25 white HP. And that's basically that. After that, we have the flopper, which people thought were nerfed. Everyone on Twitter kept saying that it only heals for 40, but as you can see in the bottom left, it heals for 50, the same amount as last season. Still on the old stuff, we have the slurpfish, which does the same exact thing as the flopper, except it works for health or shield. So as you can see, it still heals for 50. Now for all the new stuff. There are 5 new types of fish. These begin with the shield fish, which looks pretty weird in your inventory. I'll throw it down again. This is what it looks like. It's blue rarity and it gives you 50 shield. So it's essentially a shield flopper. Kind of how like a flopper only gives you health. The shield fish only gives you shield. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The reason I'm respawning is because I want to show the jellyfish off. Again, it's blue rarity just like the shield fish. It literally looks exactly like a jellyfish. And when I consume it, it gives me a splash effect as well as 20 health or shield. I'll prove that it gives you shield by the way. Just healed myself up with the bandage bazooka which is back. And now with the jellyfish it gives me 20 shield. That would also give my teammates or anyone around me 20 shield as long as they're pretty close to me. It's basically like a chug splash, it's just a fish. 
Third on the new fish list is the spicy fish. I love the name of this. It looks pretty sick. It looks pretty demonic, actually. Once you consume it, you get a 15 HP heal as well as a speed boost. It's essentially a pepper in a fish with a 15 HP heal. And I am running real fast. Oh my gosh, I'm cracked. That was not 60 seconds, by the way. That was about 30. Second to last of the new fish is the only purple one, the Hop Flopper. This bad boy does not look that cool. I'm sorry, Mr. Hop Flopper. However, when you use it, you get the same 15 HP heal that the spicy fish gave you, as well as low gravity, almost like a moon rock from season five, I believe. If I build up really high up and fall down, I take no fall damage. This is the same effect you get from a bounce pad that you get from a lot of low gravity stuff. It should also last about 30 seconds. Finally, the eighth new fish, or really the fifth new fish, the final of the eight, is the thermal fish. This thing is crazy looking. It's gold rarity, which means it's technically the rarest, even though it's not too hard to find. And as you can assume, once consumed, you get thermal vision. You also get a 15 HP heal, just like the other two. The main point is the thermal. Oh my gosh, this is insane. And it is really hard to see, so I would not recommend build fighting. Any opponents though would stand out. I'll show a little clip that I saw from Benji Fishy. Benji tested it and you cannot see people in bushes, which kind of sucks. Still, you can see people through their builds. You can see them as they're building up. You can see them pretty much everywhere and they stand out like a sore thumb in the thermal vision. Overall, it's pretty awesome. Those were all eight new fish. Hopefully that taught you what they do, what they're useful for. What I want to show now is how you can actually get more fish quickly in a much more efficient time. Like before, I'm in a standard arena game and you can actually destroy fishing holes with one shot from the boat. So I'm going to aim for it, shoot it, and I get three different fish. That is so broken. From one shot with the boat, I now have full HP and shield. Oh my gosh. Every single fishing hole on the map, when you destroy it with a boat, will give you three different items. It could be three weapons. It can be three fish. It could be a mix of them. Let's see what this one gives me. So this one was not as good. Actually, no, two floppers and a blue SMG. That's pretty solid. Boats are gonna be really overpowered this season, guys. You almost don't even need to land at a spot anymore. You can just land on a boat, break a fishing hole, and then all of a sudden you have a full loadout. Look at this, it's all blue loot. Then the other way that you could get way better fish much faster is by upgrading your fishing rod to a pro fishing rod. It's blue rarity. It looks like this. It's yellow with a little banana at the end. And it gets you a much higher chance of getting much better fish. Found a fishing hole with my pro fishing rod. What do we get? Blue famas. You know how I said there are five different types of each fish of the eight variants? What I mean by that, as you can see, is that each different type of fish has a bunch of different colored variants. This one is a green flopper. It's literally just a green version of the normal orange flopper. It does not do anything different. It looks the same in your inventory, and when you drop it, it becomes a normal flopper. The only reason it's cool is because when you go to your fishing log, you can see all the different types of fish you've caught. I've caught five green floppers in total. My biggest is 56 centimeters, which is not actually that big as you can see from my leaderboard. My boy Aries caught a monster, 57 centimeters. All the fish I've just mentioned, all eight of them have five different variants and the variants just look different. They don't give you any sort of special effect. They all work the same exact way. So I know that was a lot to take in. That's a lot of fish knowledge. Just know fish are the meta this season. They are going to help you win a lot of games. The following trick is a pretty interesting one because I've seen some people call it pay to win. Let me know down below what you think of it and whether or not you actually believe it's pay to win. It's definitely something Epic has not implemented yet and here's how to do it. All you need to do this trick is have the Mystique skin. I believe it's Battle Pass level 80. You also need to do her three challenges, which are not too hard, and that's gonna unlock the Shapeshifter emote. I'm in the Battle Lab, so it should just be a normal default skin. Nonetheless, I'll one-shot you. Go to my emotes, the Shapeshifter emote, and I become the enemy I just killed. A default. Now I'm a default running around. It does not last that long. 
So if you want something cool to show your friend, shape shift into them if you kill them in a 1v1. That's pretty cool. Onto the new locations, and you probably know the two main ones by now. You have Doom's Domain, which used to be Pleasant Park. It's got a huge house at the back now that is Doom's house, as well as a vault and giant lair underground where Doom usually is. When I say Doom, I mean Dr. Doom, by the way. And then the other one is the Sentinel's Graveyard, which has all the big Sentinels, which are basically giant robots just laying at them. I don't watch any Marvel movies, so I don't know why they are there, but they are. And they do have some pretty cool features. Firstly, yes, they do have loot on them. You can get weapons, utility, shields, all of that stuff just right on top of them. I see some shields right on his leg. However, the reason I came here is to show you this feature. You see this purple glowing orb that all of them have on their hands? If you jump on it, it actually catapults you all the way over to a different one. And you can go around in a giant circle. Boom. It's weirdly relaxing. I'm not sure how many there are in total, maybe five, and you could just keep going around as long as you don't move. Oh, I missed it. This makes it really easy to loot because you can just move to the side a little bit, get whatever loot you need to, a boogie bomb. You just build up to the hand and you could rotate right over to the next one. Especially with this house here, it makes for a really good solo landing spot. And speaking of solo landing spots, it's hard to beat the Stark Jets. These are the jets that are behind you when you first begin the game and they go past the battle bus. Three of them spawn every match, so one's here, one is here, and this is the other. They have drones flying around them, which you can break for loot, as well as a crate inside of it, which has even better loot. They also have henchmen, but I'm in arena so they're disabled. I guess I'll leave the match and I'll go get them in a normal game. I also wanted to mention that there's a finite amount of spawns that these Stark Jets can go to. You can see this is at this spot. They can't just randomly go anywhere. There are certain locations they will always be. So these henchmen guard it, you guys know that. They have the energy rifles that are actually pretty darn good and strong. The trick I wanted to show though is that if you walk up to a downed one, you can actually interact and hack it. Once you hack it, they become part of your team and they help you out. I'll hack all of them. They won't shoot you anymore, they won't try to damage you, they'll just run around as your boys. Hey, I finally got it. So at these Stark Jets, that's where you can get two of the mythic items. The first being Silver Surfer's Board. All it does is send you up in the air, basically glider redeploy, and it has a 25 second cooldown. I have heard you can get into boxes with it, which we can try out. I'm coming in. Yeah, you can get into boxes with it. So that is going to be useful. It's basically an easy way to phase into boxes. Coming through. Oh my gosh, all the W keyers will be happy. We also got to look at Groot's Bramble Shield. This is basically a baller. You just roll around in it, it heals you for white HP. It also has a 25 second cooldown, and it also does break builds. Since I'm already here, I'll also show Doom's abilities, because why not? Dr. Doom has two abilities, including Dr. Doom's Mystical Bomb and Dr. Doom's Arcane Gauntlets. The Mystical Bomb, you just charge up a big energy bomb and kablam it right on the ground. It does destroy builds and it sets them on fire, as you'll see. It also has a 20 second cooldown, which is not too bad. Then, for the Arcane Gauntlets, these are the little hand things you can see I'm holding, and you get these tiny little bursts of energy that you throw in front of you. They destroy builds, of course. They don't do a ton of damage. Damage. But you also get a double jump, which is a little more than a double jump. It's his arcane jump. One last thing is that the arcane gauntlets do 35 damage to people, while the mystical bomb does 60 damage if you get a direct hit. For the final little secret easter egg trick, it's two little locations that I think are pretty funny. We're gonna go to the Authority because that's where the first one is. By the way, if you did not know, the Authority is pretty bare now. You can see there's a lot of boxes, there's spider webs, nothing is here, there's no henchmen. Well, there's not a lot of henchmen, there's also no jewels, there's nothing except what I'm about to show you. So basically at the top, you have this depressed henchman. He's alone. All of his henchman brethren are gone. He even has a little shrine for Brutus. How cute. He's got a picture. He does not attack you unless you get really close. Ah, don't hurt me. Luckily there's a campfire up here, which is new. 
Like I said, there are two Easter eggs. This is the second one, even though this one is technically two of them. It is Jennifer Walters, aka She-Hulk, aka the skin I'm wearing, the law offices of Jennifer Walters. It's right at retail row. It's really nothing crazy. It just replaced one house. Now, if you come back to the business side of retail, the one building that always gets changed has been changed once again. This thing used to be like a Halloween store. It used to sell flowers. Now, if you go to the back of it, another old Brutus henchman base with another depressed henchman. Well, actually, this one's not really depressed. He seems to be pretty happy. Just like Jennifer Walters Law Offices, this is not too great of a spot. It's more of just something funny to show your friends. So hopefully you enjoyed it just as much as I did. Overall guys, those are all the secret season 4 tips and tricks that you definitely need to learn. Hopefully I didn't repeat myself from yesterday's video, I apologize if I did. I also hope I did not leave anything out. Again, if I did, call me out on it. On top of that, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian, all of you guys are legends for using it for the battle pass. I'm gonna to try to shout out everyone so dm me on twitter or instagram i usually respond on twitter that you use my code and i will shout you out otherwise that's it from me and i will see you guys in the next one later